Hello, and welcome to the next episode of the Live Your Spa Life Show. Spa life is a lifestyle that accepts that accomplishment and harmony coexist. The spa in spa life, the SPA, is for seek power always, that power within you to do your deeper work here in the world. I am so happy to introduce my special guest today, Mary D., who is an executive advisor and the chief fun officer at the Mad Love Agency. Mary has been helping entrepreneurs solve their biggest problems and lead international world-class organizations for over 20 years. From startup to scale up, she's helped companies grow from an idea on paper to an eight-figure success through leadership and operational excellence. Mary D, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great to be here. Uh, this, is, uh, this is such perfect timing to have this conversation with you because out of challenge, you know, a lot of people are finding a lot of challenges, what's happening with the pandemic and things being, you know, out of sorts, if you will, into moving from challenge into purpose. And you've had your share of challenges. You've survived um, breast cancer as well as a lawsuit with the FTC. And of that has birthed, you know, some philanthropic adventures, speaking engagements, and being dedicated to um, a chunk of time to the founding board member of the Breasties organization. I'm going to have you talk a little bit about that, but specifically about, you know, there's times where people feel disempowered and things aren't working. And I think people are relating to that particularly now. So I'd love for you to share your journey of some of those disempowering moments into finding your power and moving through that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's a, such a great place to start. Um, I would say that after receiving a cancer di diagnosis, that that's definitely one of the most life altering things that can happen, right? Anytime you hear that you have an illness and I pride myself on being someone who's healthy and vibrant and takes care of myself. So to get that kind of news is definitely a shock to the system. And I think it's also a little bit of a shock to the ego too, because I've taken such pride again in you know, taking good care of myself. And so to, to hear that there is something awry in my body was definitely, you know, a step back just emotionally, just doing a lot of emotional check-ins saying, am I, you know, I'm, I'm missing forgiveness in a part of my life that I just haven't, you know, really dug deep in. And then other parts of it is saying, Hey, there's always a purpose for the things that, that are happening in life. And I can choose to respond really negatively this, to this, or I can choose to like sink in, dig down and go through it you know, experience all the feelings, do all the things and see where the journey takes me. And I'm really, really glad I did it because one of the things I almost did is I almost hid behind it. And I said, let me go secretly in the background and get this taken care of. And I don't have to share this. I don't have to tell anyone. And as that started to happen, I realized, no, no, when we go through our biggest shame or our biggest adversity or whatever it is that that makes us kind of want to hide, that sometimes is the thing we need to shine into the light. And I'm so grateful for it because it seems like in just a matter of months, I was able to connect with other communities like the Breasties that you mentioned. It's a nonprofit out of New York. And they very soon after obviously had me come into the fold and then um, invited me onto their board. And it was so amazing to me that I could have such instant influence over such an amazing group of young women who are going through a lot of these challenges that I honestly can't imagine going through, uh, even going through it at 40 seemed like, oh, I'm so young, like I'm the youngest person in the room. Whereas I'm in a room full of women who are 20 and 30 years old, you know, going through a breast cancer journey. So I would say that that piece alone has been amazing for me, but uh, life didn't stop there. It thought it would stack on one more thing. And two weeks after I got out of my surgery, I got served with a lawsuit from the Federal Trade Commission. And that was probably, I'd say, in the history of lawsuits you can get as a business, the worst one. Uh, that one really went down to financial devastation, a whole year of frozen accounts, and just, you know, that really kind of stuck weird feeling of, hey, I think I've done everything right in life. You know, I've saved my money, I've invested it, I've done all these things, only to see that it could all be taken away in one fell swoop. And that was a very also kind of painful realization of, huh, things are, the things that we sometimes think might be in our control are not always in our control. And there is a sweet surrender 
that I think happens in those moments as well, where you can go one way of the sky is falling, or you can go, how do I embrace this? How do I connect with this and figure out like, how is this here to serve me? And so I've got Absolutely. lawsuit, breast cancer all going on at the same time. And <laughs> my dog, my, my chocolate lab of 14 years also, she finally, you know, was, was going to walk the rainbow bridge. So it was a tough time. It was a really tough time. And I'd say that that, wow. that was probably one of the biggest, biggest challenging times of my life for sure. Right. Well, before we go into what are some of the things that you did, you know, I really wanted to highlight is um, I really appreciate the fact of those things of, of wanting to be undercover and not to share those things. Um, you know, a lot of times I talk about when I worked undercover with the police department and there's a certain aspect of yourself you're not sharing. And I noticed the times when I was also going undercover in my life, the things that I you know, maybe was more embarrassed about, or I didn't want people to know, or, or those kind of things. And it's times like this, when things feel like they're blowing up, that there's more challenges than normal, you know, when we have to look at things from a different perspective, there is that tendency to want to go undercover, to not share those things. I think this is part of why these kind of conversations are so important and community um, is such an important aspect of that as well. So you standing into um, so, you know, supporting the breasties was another way for you to be out there, share with people who are walking blindly into something that you know, they, they didn't see coming. So, you know, and then especially a lot of people are also now finding um, a big shift with their finances, you know, whether or not people are no longer working in brick and mortar, or there's a shift in the way that they're doing business, or they're staying home more, and now they're dealing with kids at home. There's just so many different things that are happening. So having a financial hit is really, you know, in, you know, top of awareness for a lot of people. So when you had several of those things all happening, any one of those can be a challenge for someone, but having that all happen together, what was your first step to, start moving through this and how did you continue to put a foot forward and continue in that journey? That's a fantastic question. The way that I was able to continue was in a few, in a few ways, actually, I would say there was not one magical pill that I swallowed in all of that. But the first one was to, I, I definitely am a person who believes in feeling all the things. I think it's super important that when we meet with any kind of adversity, trauma, disappointment, that we, we process it. It's super important to process it because if we don't process it, I believe that it, it sinks further down and it's much harder to, to bring up and get rid of you know, or work through as we go. So for sure, it was feeling all the things. And I can say with 100% with certainty, these are all feelings. These were all new feelings for me, Diane. They were feelings that I have not experienced before. Uh, and it was a lot of overwhelm and it was a lot of challenges about, oh, like what does the future hold for me? Like, what is this going to look like? But the pivot side of it was saying, you know what? At the end of the day, stuff is just stuff. Money can be made again. Uh, stuff can be bought again if that's what it needs to be. And my relationships are still intact in my love of people and my friends and my family are still intact. I have a community. So I think a big portion of that is really settling back into gratitude. So anytime I would find myself kind of going into this funky space, I would just stop, breathe and bring myself back to gratitude because there's so much to be thankful for. And sometimes it's hard to see those things right before us if our blinders are on because we have this lens that we're looking through, which is all the crap that's around me and happening right now. If we just pick those up and take them off, we often see that there's a lot of beauty and joy and great things in front of us as well. And that was a big year mm. for me to learn a lot of new lessons and things that actually helped me move forward really powerfully in saying, hmm, it's okay to like not be the one everyone has to go to. Like, why did I feel like I had to wear the strong one mask for so long? You know, like it's okay to let other people enjoy giving to me and enjoy blessing me and just watching things unfold for me in a really organic and beautiful way that I could not have dreamed it would have turned out that way. So that was definitely a big part of it. Yeah, that, that is so powerful. And I think it's so important 
to, uh, you know, have this acknowledgement and awareness of where you're at, you know, there is overwhelm, there is, you've not been in this place before, there is all of that uncertainty that, that's happening. And then to look at what are some powerful things can do, you know, taking a deep breath, you know, really looking at what are you grateful for? And, you know, what is so important that I think that a lot of our listeners can relate to is, you know, not always asking for help and feeling like you have to be the one that, that does everything. And so letting go of certain things and letting other people come in and, and support can, can make a really big difference. So uh, I think it's important to have those, those keys to um, really see what is different. Let's just fly. <laughs> um, to see what's different here. <laughs> Again, the unexpected, right? The things that, that happen. Um, so it's also what, what comes into play as far as listening to your, your intuition? Like what is, how has that come into play for you? Intuition is definitely, definitely a huge piece of it. And so a big part of that is being open to the connections and the support that are coming through during my personal time of need, those were really important for me to listen to and to embrace that and to remember that like from, from someone who is used to being in that supportive role for that duration of time, like, wow, this feels really good. Like this is what you do for people. And that part that felt really good to, to have that piece of the exchange because I don't know that I'd felt it fully before until I was able to experience it myself in such a time of need because for the most part, I am super optimistic. So, you know, if the house burns down, I'm like, yay, we're getting a new house and we're getting new furniture, you know, like that's my, my tendency to have that outlook. But it's important for me to remember too, that, that that's not how everyone views the world. And so how am I supporting people when the world feels like everything is falling down? And being, being able to be in that place and really realize it in, in being in the worst possible place I felt like was really a way to put me into that power of knowing like there is such deep work that happens here that I don't even recognize because it's just happening. Right, right. Well, and I think that, you know, an important statement that, um, that you've mentioned that I think makes a really big difference when we're looking at what kind of impact that we're having is that, um, you know, life is truly 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you respond. And I think this is such an important, um, you know, thing to, to look at right now, because there are a lot of people reacting and in fear and just um, not really choosing how they're going to be moving forward. So can you talk about how you can kind of take that extra moment to respond so that you can kind of look at the totality of what's happening and how you can stay positive in that path? Totally, totally. So one that I mentioned obviously was gratitude. I believe in the power of fueling those positive thoughts. And the other one is, again, intuition, which is being, you know, inspired and guided by your higher power, mind's God. Um, everyone's got their, you know, I always tell people if you're, if you're offended by that, just replace God with love and you'll find that it's so so easy to flow into those messages and receive what you're supposed to. And then on top of that, the third one is I don't take anything personally. And Diane, I think that this is a really, really big one, even through the uh, challenges and the adversity part of me just says, no matter what, just don't take it personally, right? See all the things that you can learn. Absolutely. But there's no need to, demonize myself or beat myself up over what is happening in life because stuff happens to all of us and people happen to all of us in situations. And it's remembering that like, I had some of my weakest, worst moments where I probably wasn't a kind person or I might've been moody or it might've been a bad day. And so it's remembering that sometimes that's what other people are having when they're responding, when they're yelling at you in traffic or when they're, you know, at the grocery store after the last wipe. I mean, <laughs> everyone's <laughs> in their motivations around what's happening and they have this whole internal dialogue that's going on that we don't always get to see. So I think it's just right. really, really looking at that and saying, hmm, okay, this is where we've got an opportunity to step up and, and have some compassion in our hearts for where other people just might be. Um, and then also, you know, being strong in who we are. And, and I think knowing who you are also is such a big piece of that as well. Right. 
Right. No, I think it is definitely, it's, it's so important. Just what are the inner dialogues that we're having? And, uh, you know, sometimes it's easier said than done to, you know, not take things personally, but if we do look at it from, you know, an empathetic place of who knows what's happening to them and it may be just a projection that they're having on us, then we can have some more perspective in, in what that is and, and what that looks like. So um, one of the things I want to kind of dive into a little bit um, personally for you, you know, you love to travel. So I'd love to hear, you know, what, when things open up, what is your, your next travel plan that you're going to have? Um, you've got a husband of 11 years and some fur babies. And you mentioned about that you're willing to try anything twice. I'd love for you to elaborate on that because I know people always say they'll try something once. Why are you willing to do it twice? I'm a firm believer, Diane, that if you try something once, it can be a fluke, right? Like it can be a really bad experience or it can be a really positive experience. And, and especially when things are, are bad or uncomfortable, those ones I especially believe in doing at least one more time because then it's at least a little more of a litmus test. It's kind of like going to a restaurant, right? And your friend recommends a dish and you try it and you're like, oh, no, normally I love, you know, sweet potato. <laughs> The sweet potato dish is not happening, but then they're like, but it's so good almost every time. So maybe that day they just had a guest chef. Maybe the chef was off. Maybe they had a new person they were training. So I believe we try it one more time, just, just to be sure. So that's my, just try it twice uh, philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> and then when things open up, where's the first place you're going to travel? Yes. Yeah. So the first place, place I'm going to travel is probably home to see my mom, right? As this was all happening, I was actually going to visit my mother in Texas and she was so excited and we're very close. So it's been a little bit of a challenge because I, as someone who was traveling so much, literally right before I went into quarantine, I did not want to risk being someone who could possibly be carrying uh, the virus and then deliver it to my mother who is in her, her mid seventies and immunocompromised. So I made the decision to, to not take that trip. So we, you know, do a little FaceTime almost every day, which is great, but nothing beats that warm hug in person and, uh, mom, mom's, mom's homemade curry. <laughs> yeah, definitely a, a new time of awareness for people to look at, you know, their health and, you know, ways that people are compromised, how they can fortify their immune system. I mean, there's such different conversations of the just kind of top of mind awareness around health. So this is a good opportunity for everyone to check in and do, do what they can do to increase their own health as well as the health of, of the people that they love. And, you know, this is also time because we are spending more time at home to really look at our home environments and are they inspiring us and are they taking our energy away or are they lifting us up? And so one of the questions I love to ask my guests is, we have a different experience of how we feel in our kitchen versus our bedroom or our office. So what is your favorite room in your home and why? Ooh, my favorite room is actually our den. We have a kind of sunken uh, extra, I, I would call it a second living room, but it's basically our, our sunken den. It's a much warmer space. It's got um, windows pretty much on all sides. It's comfortable because it's got like a big comfy couch in there it's got the decorative pillows and there's a lot of just open space in that room it's actually where i do the majority of my work and my calls um, and i like the green space in there it has plants and just the nature i like to be able to also look outside easily see all the nature that's happening right outside of my window and the sun again this i think the sunlight is probably the biggest part of that room I'm a fan of sunlight. It's one of my grounding practices in the morning to go stand out in the sun and send appreciations into the day and set intentions and just feel the sunshine on my face and the grass in my feet. So I'd say that that part, uh, that room is probably one of my favorite spaces in the house because it gives me the ability to uh, feel, feel the warmth, see the sun and see the nature, uh, even though I'm inside doing my best work. I love it. Oh, that sounds so beautiful. And, you know, it's so important to create those spaces and really find the things that really bring us the most joy and is the experience of our life, um, which leads me to, let's talk about your new book, uh, Just Eat the Pie, right? So Just Eat the Pie. Um, let's talk a little bit about what, what that is about and what was your kind of inspiration in creating it? Absolutely. So Just Eat the Pie is really about you know, living your best life. 
And pie is basically a metaphor for all the things in life that we want, but we're maybe either too scared or too stuck in perfection or fear to just go out and enjoy it. So it seems like, you know, the whole world is on a diet from something, right? We're, we're <laughs> indulging in this, or we're not getting enough of that, or we're denying ourselves certain, certain luxuries or certain, you know, the, the dessert at the end of the day. And so I, I always joke with my friends and I say, dessert should be first, actually. Dessert should be first. And uh, if I ruled the world, that's probably how it would be. And we'd, we'd maybe have salad last. <laughs> for the body, people don't know this, it's actually better for your uh, glycemic index because you don't end up with all this sugar at the end. You actually do it at the beginning and then offset it with your, with your protein and your balanced meal. But, uh, but, but, but besides the science, uh, it's really about being able to, to not beat ourselves up too much over all of the decisions and things that need to happen in life. And so it's like, just eat the pie, you know, like don't get so obsessed about um, what should be or what shouldn't be, what could be, what couldn't be, but that there's this really beautiful present moment in time that we can be in where we still can acknowledge our past and learn from it and also be ready for the future, but really, really learning to just enjoy what's present and what's now so that we don't miss the most beautiful parts. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I know um, part of, of your you know, service and working with people is helping them get over fears. And particularly now, there's more people than ever you know, afraid to leave their home, afraid to you know, step in, back into life, you know, really doing things in, in a different way. What are, um, what are some of the practicalities that you're sharing with people of getting over those fears? Mm. So I'm a really big fan of helping people reframe and also in looking at the stories we tell ourselves and making a new story. It's just the reality of the fact that we can change our story anytime we want to. And being able to see different perspectives, being able to really dig deep and say, why do I tell myself that story? Is it a story that was passed down to me? Or is it a story from a particular experience that just felt very traumatic? And so now I believe every experience is that same thing uh, versus being able to find new experiences and immersing ourselves in an environment that helps us get through those phobias and also get through those fears that feel very, very real to us, no matter what they are. And I have a lot of great frameworks that I like to share with people. Um, those will be in uh, Just Eat the Pie. So they'll be available for, uh, for everyone that wants it. And uh, we'll have a, a digital download version for folks to, uh, to do for free if they want it. Oh, fantastic. I think it's so important to look at the reframe and especially with stories, right? It's like, what are the stories that we tell ourselves? And, you know, I did uh, an exercise uh, one time with one of my mentors where uh, they had us tell a story and then they had us tell the story from the perspective of other people that were there. Like, what did they see into the story? Because it allows you to have perspective of what are some of the things that you maybe didn't see or didn't expect. And so I think it's such a powerful thing to reframe how things are. And then from that perspective, you're able to then choose how are you going to now interpret that story and who you're being? And so I think those, it, those are very important aspects to moving past fear and redefining fear to see what that is, because how people react in that can either um, elevate them and feel stronger and, and now they see greater possibilities or they can feel trapped and small and insecure. And then, you know, there's nowhere to go from that place. So it's like finding that next step uh, to move you through that. So what are some of the other things that you have, um, you've really embraced in this time. Like, you know, these are different ways to look at, you know, your day or your way of being, you know, so how are you reacting differently or responding better to um, how things have shifted for you in your life? That's a wonder, wonderful question. And I love this question, Diane, because I feel like this has been a time of focus and freedom in a different way. When people think about being locked into their locked into their homes or quarantined. They're like, we're on <laughs> such a, such a negative way to look at it. And I'm like, well, yes and no, yes and no. We have the freedom to give ourselves permission instead of going out for social hour and, you know, being in town, going at whatever your favorite restaurant is 
in recreating experiences at home or online with our friends and our family. And I feel like because it's more intentional, we actually experience a deeper level of connection. Here at home, one of the things that we've done is we actually planted a really huge garden. And what was beautiful about it is seeing how everybody came together to make it happen from the uh, planting of the seeds to watching them get bigger, to taking care of them every day, to making sure the critters stay off of them, giving them enough sunlight. And then my husband got super handy and went up the hill and he and one of the helpers, you know, they just dug out this whole section. They created stairs, they created a deck, they created these big planting boxes. Um, just watching all of that transpire. Oh, bees, I can't, can't forget, we got two boxes of bees. So watching them busy and making honey and seeing just all of this unfold before us has been amazing. And we were laughing because we were like, oh, we need an ingredient from the store. And I was like, how beautiful will this be to be able to say, oh, I need a couple onions. Let me just go to the garden and pick them. So we really <laughs> have been enjoying that process of doing some of those things that have been on our list that were like, oh, well, when we get around to it, whereas now it's like we're home and this is focus time to be able to double down and do the things that we love and really want to do. And the garden was one thing to come out of that. The bees were a, a pleasant additional surprise. Uh, I can say that from a, a work perspective, definitely being able to finish up my book, uh, you know, work on a second one and also work even closer with my clients that really need more focus time and then just encourage the ones who are doing amazing right now. I'd say that those, all of those things coming together, being more creative about getting online with my friends, uh, even within the Breasties community, we we're supposed to have our big camp uh, this month. And so it was really disappointing to say, sorry, you know, we have 500 women coming to this event. We only do once a year. And what do we do now? Well, we pivot, we make a virtual event and we also have regular online get togethers and we theme them where, you know, we, maybe it's a pajama day, maybe it's a, you know, where your funkiest green thing day, whatever it is to, to make it fun and make it intentional and create connection when we can't be there in person to, you know, hug and kiss and be together. And, and I was laughing about your question about travel because, you know, I think in sometimes in our mind, we're like, Ooh, I'm going to travel somewhere amazing because I've been cooped up and I've, I've definitely been to some amazing places. But at the end of the day, I'm like, I just want to be with my mom. Like I want to be home with mom, you know? So that's, that's another like big piece of it that just felt good. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think if anything, this time has allowed people to get really clear on what's most important to them, how things are going to shift. Um, I don't see it as we're going back to something. I think we're stepping forward into something different where we get to actually choose how we're spending our time. And I think a lot of people realize that, you know, even though they love their work, that it's not going to be their whole life. Like there, it really is about the relationships and the impact and how much, you know, with focused time, you can get more done in less time. And so I think it's such an important thing about how we're creating the kind of life that we want, um, that that comes into fruition. So I, I love so much, you know, Mary D, what you're up to and how you're supporting people um, through this time. And I know that people are going to want to stay in um, contact with you and how can they go about doing that? Awesome. They can stay in touch with me through my website, mary at maryd.net. They can also find me obviously on uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, all the fun places. Um, most of my, my handles are at the Mary D. So with that, thank you for so much for having me also, Diane. I appreciate you and I honor the work that you do in the world and uh, wish you the biggest blessings. Uh, thank you so much, Mary D. Loved having you here and sharing your wisdom. And for our community, our listeners out there, thank you so much for being here. It's so important to us that you're spending your time, your precious time with us. And no matter what platform you're on, please put in your comments, you know, what did you take away from here? What is it that you'd like to hear more about? And make sure that you tag both Mary D and myself because we want to support you um, on your journey and what you're doing and what you're shifting in your life. So um, share this with a girlfriend, get it out there, and until we connect again, live your spa. Bye for now. See you later.